So I got a question from Monarchist Autist, and he said, Argent, I want to start studying history, but I don't even know where to start. And this was an excellent question, and I decided to do something kind of fancy for this and kind of go through some of my books. I unfortunately don't really read physical books that much anymore. I'm an auditory learner, and I have a long commute, so I listen to audiobooks. But I was able to pull a couple out from back before audiobooks when I read more physical copies of stuff. So I think it's a good question because I'm always worried that like people will, if they're studying philosophy or theology or whatever, they'll just go buy Thuma, Summa Theologica or they'll go get like some extremely specific history, like they'll just start reading Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire and they won't really know any of the context and they'll get frustrated and they won't get anything out of it, and then they'll just basically rage quit. It's also overwhelming. There's like 5,000 or however many. I know humanity is older than that. But in terms of recorded history, there, there's so much stuff. It's so dense. Every frame has so... Well, yeah. For so much stuff in it. So where, where'd you even start? how do you even pick a topic? Well, gentle listener, I have some examples here. So, some people might say these are kind of juvenile, but I read these, like, up into my 20s, my early 20s, and these are great. So, if you're just starting history and you have no idea what you're doing, I recommend get your, getting yourself a nice anthology book. As you can see, I've read this one so much over the years, the binding has gone off. So, here we have the visual history of the modern world, and in it we have... Basically, major events that happened every year for the 20th century. So we have like a page here, Russia and Japan at war, uh, agreement between Britain and France, uh, the Liberal Party takes power. It's kind of like these short articles, but it's really good because it gives you an overview of the major events that happened in the 20th century. And these are always excellent because it, it, it kind of gives you an idea of the order of events kind of the, the broad order in which stuff happened, it also gives you a um, a way to kind of compare perspective. It also just kind of gives you a lot of general knowledge. So you're like, oh, this is kind of a bit about World War One. This is how it ties into World War Two. General historical overview and general historical context is extremely important, as is being able to compare and contrast stuff. Furthermore, it kind of gives you an idea. You, you might be reading through this, you might be going, wow, all the World War I stuff is really interesting, or World War II stuff. I want to know about World War II. Or the space race stuff. The space race stuff is fascinating. I want to know more about that. So that's good for, like, modern stuff. There's other ways to approach this. <laughs> if you kind of are, you know you're more interested in military history, you could get something like this, where you have great battles. So, let's see here. We have Lepanto, where the Christians famously beat the Turks. So, that's a very important battle in history. Um, you might have Masada, Marathon. And it just kind of gives you a, a brief look at a whole bunch of stuff. And you might say, wow, I find ancient Greek the ancient Greek battles really interesting. Or I find Caesar's conquest really interesting. And it gives you an idea, maybe, of a more specific book you want to read, or something about a particular era you want to read. And then we kind of have something a bit more broad like this, that just has little articles on different parts of history. Um, I think this one is divided up into errors, eras, you have lifestyle, you have milestones, you have advances in science and technology... It just gives you all kinds of little stuff, and you might say, wow, I find lifestyle during the Victoria era really interesting, so maybe I'll do that next. So, I recommend just getting one of these. Just another one I happen to have. Atlas of Weaponry. So, this just kind of goes through the history and development of weapons. So, we have like hand cannons and early... Archibus, we have a trebuchet, and it talks all about how they were used, main times they were used, and this is good for a good historical overview, and gives you some ideas as to what you might want to read next. 
So then once you've kind of looked at that and you might say, wow, there's, there's kind of some other stuff I want to know now that I kind of, maybe you really thought the World War II stuff was interesting. That's where a lot of people like to start. So you might get a book like this, Smithsonian World, The Definitive Visual History of World War II. And this is just more detailed, like we have a whole couple pages on Pearl Harbor. We have a timeline, kind of day by day. You have all this kind of espionage stuff from World War II. And it just gives you a good overview, but in, in more detail of various parts of World War II. And then you might say, wow, I found the, the part about espionage really interesting. So then you can read a more specific book. Or, wow, I found Churchill really neat. I'm going to read a biography of Churchill. Or something like that. Or I found Dunkirk really cool. I'm going to watch the new Christopher Nolan movie when it comes out. So that's good. Something like that. Uh, then we have like this philosophical classics. Just an overview of different philosophies throughout history. Just kind of brief summaries of uh, major philosophical writings. And I think before you read kind of a primary source, you should read a secondary source describing it. Because not all philosophers were very good writers, and it's they often just kind of ramble. So something like that might be good. You might be reading through it and going, wow, I really like Voltaire. Maybe I'll read some more Voltaire, or I'll read some Plato or something. Let's see, what else do I have here? The Dragon Throne. This is just a brief history where they describe every imperial dynasty and have a little blurb about every emperor. And just kind of the highlights of their rule. So that might be interesting. And then you might say, oh, I find the Tong Dynasty interesting. Or I find the Ming interesting. And then you want to read a more specific book about that. Or, oh, I found Puyi or Emperor Qin interesting. So, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Then I also have kind of a church history here. Kind of basic. The story of Christianity. So we have, like, pictures. We have kind of early stories you have just a lot of different detail and you might say wow there's that's kind of neat uh i like that part about saint ignatius i'm going to read a biography of his or i like the church and scientists i'll get a specific book on that so i just recommend it's good to read a couple of these overview books just because you might not know what you're interested in uh sometimes you might think i'm interested in the middle ages and then you kind of get to looking at it and you're like yeah it moves too slow. It's kind of the religious issues don't really interest me. So then we just have a couple examples of books that are pretty specific. So we have Tournament of Shadows, The Great Game, and The Race for Empire in Central Asia. So that is obviously about... Um, the race for the great game was played between Russia and Britain in which they were trying to get influence in Central Asia, like Afghanistan, Tibet, uh, the various stands, Pakistan, etc. So that's more specific. So if you're in, really interested in that, that's a good history of that. Uh, I have here Mao, the untold story, which I really enjoyed might be the Longest, one of the longest books I've ever read. That in um, Napoleon, A Life. Uh, we have a primary source here. Machiavelli's The Prince. I really recommend reading like some of that other stuff before you get to something like The Prince, just because it helps to have the context, or else it's, it's very easy to just interpret things. Which is why I don't think people should necessarily read the Bible that much themselves. Then we have something like this, which I read in university that I quite enjoyed. It's Our Turn to Eat, which is about corruption in Kenya. And that was a very interesting book. And then for contrast, we have a book I really used to like um, by my former favorite author. He is a very good writer, Paul William Roberts, A War Against Truth, an intimate account of, of the invasion of Iraq. So I have that in there. To kind of talk a bit about how are you, how do you pick these books? How do you determine which one's legitimate and which isn't? Generally speaking, I think it's good if they have kind of a generic, not completely dry and boring, but not like exciting title. If something has an exciting title, like exciting title, sorry, like Bush lied, people died, 
or um, trying to think what else the the genocide inflicted by the Catholic Church or the evil of colonialism that's probably going to be super biased. It's I don't really think it's necessarily like if if you want talking points if you kind of want history from a biased standpoint and there's nothing really wrong with that. But if you're just starting out and you don't really know in your opinion, you don't really have any opinion or knowledge, I wouldn't recommend reading something like this. Because he does provide a lot of interesting stuff about the invasion of Iraq because he was there. At the same time, he has an extremely anti-American bias. So that's really important to keep in mind. This is good. Mao the Untold Story. Okay, that, that is, an, that is a, a good title for a history book. So it's saying, okay, we're going to get into all these details people might not know about. But it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't give the impression they're just going to sensationalize everything. Uh, like Tournament of Shadows, they're trying to sound cool. I had another book that someone ever gave back to me to rule the waves, A History of the Royal Navy. Uh, there's a biography of Churchill, The Last Lion. Uh, Napoleon, A Life. These are all examples of good titles of, for books. And maybe that sounds kind of weird, but if you have something like a People's History of the United States or something, that's going to be very biased. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with a biased book. It's just if you're getting into the study, you might not want to read that right, right away until you have something a bit more unbiased. And people will say, well, all books are biased. That's true, but sometimes people try... To, but it's it's people... There's kind of books like this, or books like this, where they're largely trying to just give you the facts. And if they give their opinions, it's pretty obvious. Um, they'll give you the facts, and then they'll give their interpretation. But they, there is a focus on trying to be objective, trying to report, even if they do have a particular perspective. Now, if you want to look at uh, the author, uh, generally speaking, I think... History professors aren't really that bad. Historians aren't as bad as a lot of other things. Maybe look at other books they've written. Look at if they're a major activist. Because they could just be liberal, but not like a crazy Marxist liberal. So maybe if you want to do a little bit of background research, if they've written like a whole bunch of books and they're widely regarded, then that's probably a good sign. Or... Yeah, like, if, if most of their books are, like, um, Henry the Seventh, The Dawn of Tudor England, and then they also wrote, like, How the Scots Invented the, the Modern Age, and then maybe something like The Rise and Fall of the House of Caesar, or The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Those are all just kind of good, those are good signs, because none of those sound like they're just going to sensationalize it and make a bunch of stuff up. That's not like a guarantee, but generally speaking, those are kind of some of the guidelines I'd have when you're trying to pick a specific book to read. Also, if you're picking a biography, you have to kind of look at maybe the beginning or the title to figure out what the thesis of the book is. Like, I read Tight in the Life of J.D. Rockefeller, and it was kind of, it was pretty clearly on, it was focused on the duality of his deep religious faith and his desire to make money. And that was kind of the main theme of it, and there's nothing wrong with the theme, you just have to keep that in mind. And then there's a book like Stalin, Breaker of Nations. Now the name is kind of provocative, but there is like a proportion here. Like if it's, I don't know, some kind of boring U.S. president like... Garfield, it's like Garfield, the the lion eagle who preyed upon the snake of death or something like that. But it's probably a bad sign. But if it's someone like Stalin who's just obviously evil, and any like objective historian who has a, a sense of decency has to basically criticize. But I think that's that's kind of different. And that book was kind of stressing how much of a sociopath he was. But it's it's not even so much what their thesis is. It's do they present evidence? Is it pretty obvious when it's their opinion and when they're just giving facts? So I think you just have to be discerning. I think it's important to read something like this or something like um, that before you kind of 
dial it down a bit because it's it gives you some context. So if you're reading Mao the Untold Story and you just hear something, you're like, well, that doesn't match anything else I read in kind of the overview books. That's probably a bad sign. And it gives you some sort of idea of where to kind of dial it back and see what else is going on. So I hope that is a, a I hope that answers monarchist autist question. I hope that gives some of my um, viewers some ideas about where to start studying history. And just kind of some general ideas. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with these. I'm sure a lot of people would say, oh, this is really infantile. This isn't really detailed, but... I'm kind of the opinion, the more general knowledge you have about history, the better. If you notice, I normally make a lot of disparate references over a lengthy period of time. And yeah, I just think that's kind of part of it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you took away something from it. Uh, have a nice weekend, everybody. Or I'm probably not going to upload it today, so <laughs> that'll confuse you.